Hello dear students, good morning to all of you. Uh, from this video lecture, we are going to start new unit, unit number 2. And unit number 2 is divided into the three parts. So first part is the theory of production and how it's applicable in, we can say, whenever you're working at the time, how it's applicable at the produ production process. It's simply you have to study in these topics. Okay, so let's start it. First one. There are the container of unit number two, part one are introduction to theory of production, meaning of production function, factor of production, law of variable proportion, and last one is law of return to scale. So mainly five topics are considering in the unit number two, part one, and in this video lecture session, uh, these five topics will be discussed. Okay, so let's start it. First one, there are the introduction to theory of production. So first one, there are the definition of production. So first one, let me tell you that what is the meaning of production. Uh, whenever company or any factory or we can say that they have to doing this type of production activity, so they have to convert uh, we can say raw material to the finished good, right? So the process of production and after this product, uh, production process, there are the one product or we can say that the quantity of product are converted from raw to finished goods. So it's called the production. So here there are the definition of production. Production is a creation of utility. So this definition is given by the Alfred Marshall. In examination, whenever you write the definition, and if you remember the name of the writer, then and then you have to write the definition, and after that you have to write the writer's name. Okay. So production means what? Production is one type of creation of utility. Utility means what? You have to create a raw material. Okay. Do you have to get the take the example? You have to take a one cotton, uh, and then after you have to convert the cotton to the clothes is called the one type of production process okay so this type of utilities are created through production production is a creation of bundle of satisfaction so this definition is given by philip kotler so uh, this definition according to this definition philip kotler is said that that production is a one type of we can say that created the satisfaction uh, that whenever you are working in the any factory or any production sector at that time you have to get a raw material and how you converted this raw material to uh, effective finished goods so this can given the satisfaction to your customer okay then after introduction to theory of production so uh, why this type of theory of production are uh, we can say necessary for the company and for the factory and as an engineer why you study this type of theory so first one from uh, form utility okay it's converted form into the different form take the example uh, if you have a one piece of log and log converted to chair means it's a one type of form converted form is converted from raw material to finished good then second one is a place utility. As you know that several companies are working at the national, we can say different nations. So it's called the MNCs, multinational firms, right? Or multinational companies. So at that time, they have to be not work any one sector or one, comp uh, we can say one country. So they have to utilize their place and they have to be a requirement of transformation so that our Indian product can available to the all, all over the, we can say world. And uh, from America, we cannot, uh, we can, if, ha if we have required any product of the America, uh, Australia, then we cannot go there and purchase the product. These products are available in our India. Okay. So this type of place utility are also exist. Then after time utility, because uh, all products are not durable. Some products are perishable. So at that time, perishable products, uh, they have to be required the time utility because if you don't use this product, this product cannot be, we can say that they can be destroyed. Take the example of milk, 
then after vegetable fruits so this type of we can say products there are the perishable products so you have to uh, purchase or you have to uh, consume this product within the particular time if you don't use this product in the particular time then this can be one type of waste and it's uh, we can say term sometimes it's create the higher cost for the company then after possession utility possession means what possession means you have to transfer the ownership to the other person take the example uh, whenever in the production sector they have to produce one product and then after they have to wholesaler sell to this product to the agent so agent uh, from owner to the agent is a one type of we can say possession transfer the ownership transfer okay then after what are what is the meaning of production function the production activities is result into the outcome of physical tangible goods or delivered the intangible services so this finished output is obtained through the processing of raw material as under here there are the one example is given to you that here there are the input of raw materials machine workers and production services and then after they are doing the processing step by step through the machinery and setup and then after you have to get the output of finished good here one illustration is given to you there are the row cotton looms operator and power and they have to doing this process spinning weaving and processing and then after you have to get the finished clothes okay then after factor of production so uh, this question factor of production is asked in gtu examination 3 or 3 to 4 times so according to the point of view examination uh, this topic this factor of production is very important so you should learn about it so what is the meaning of uh, factor of production and what are the factor of production mainly four factor of production first one land land the is a one type of we can say factor of production without land you cannot doing any production activity so land is very necessary and first important factor of the production without this factor production cannot exist so uh, land is required the rent if you uh, if you possess any land at the time you have to given a rent on this land then after second second uh, factor is labor okay so labor uh, there are the various types of labor skillful and unskillful labor if a labor are doing the physical activities then they call the labor and if the labor are if the your worker are doing the mental activities they call the employees labor have to be uh, you have to given to the labor as a cost you have to given wages and employees you have to given the salary so wages and salary both are different things then after third factor is the capital capital means what in the simple way you can say that capital means finance uh, without finance any business can not exist or not working uh, whenever we can say take the example without spinal cord our body cannot we can say stay okay Uh, so as in our uh, what type of spinal cord are working in our body and that type of work like finance is finance is working in this in the business and production without finance production activity cannot stay so capital is very important so uh, if if any uh, we can say producer or if any owner can borrow the money from the different person or different parties at the time they have to pay the interest on this Uh, on the capital okay so one type of cost then after fourth one is the entrepreneur okay entrepreneur means what entrepreneur is a one type of person who are working or who are cooperating this three factors very effectively and very we can say efficiently so uh, if a entrepreneur are working then after you have to pay the profit if you get the surplus profit surplus profit means what you assume that uh, uh, from the production process you have to generate a uh, 1 lakh rupees but you have to generate the 1 1 lakh and 50000 rupees then 50000 rupees is your surplus profit so as an entrepreneur uh, whenever they are working so you have to pay the higher profit to them then after 
there are the in detail of the produ production factor first factor is land so there are the meaning and characteristics of land the term of land in a narrow sense we refers to say that soil is for the agriculture and surface of the earth but in the economics land as the factor of production is used in the wider sense so the term land is include the surface of land minerals deposits below the land and the heat climate and rain above the land so land is considered in the economics in the wild meaning they cannot consider in the narrow meaning land means what alfred marshall stated that land means all materials and the force which the nature gives a freely to man aid and the water in the air and the light and heat because a land uh, we can say this land is one type of gift that god given to us okay thus the land is the natural resources and owned by the individual and the institution and used to the generate the periodic income income flow so uh, this type of land are requirement uh, we can use for the farming uh, for constructing any building for doing the production activity so a uh, different institution can use the different uh, way to this land then after what are the characteristics of land first one land is gift to individual so one type of gift that god given to us man cannot make the land right so it's a one type of gift that god given to us second land has a fixed and the limited surface on the earth uh, in your in your science we can say in the science subject whenever you are um, you are studying in the 8 standard or 9 standard at that time you have to learn that there are the 75 percentage of the earth we can say there are the consider as the we can say that minerals and uh, of uh, overall water way right water body so on the 75 percentage and there are the only 25 percent there are the considering as the uh, we can say land okay then after third topic the valuation of land is done as per the features of the land like a soil features and the location according to the location according to the feature of soil they have to use like some Uh, lands are very fertilized so they have to use this land as the farming or agriculture activities and some lands are we can say uh, rich in the minerals so they have to use the land as to consuming the minerals then after the supply of land is inelastic it cannot be increase or decrease because it's a one type of uh, god gift so it cannot be increased by the woman uh, we, we can say humans and it cannot uh, be decreased by the humans so it's a one type of inelastic it cannot be increased or decreased then after land is passive okay land is passive because uh, whenever uh, entrepreneur or worker can not doing the activity on the land then land cannot be uh, we can say that doing self activity without the use of land the land cannot doing activity by the self so it's a one type of passive factor then after land is permanent and the in indestructible means land is permanent we cannot transfer the land from one place to another place uh, we cannot transfer the we can say sometimes uh, some lands are very uh, rich in the fertilized so we cannot con uh, we cannot transfer this land to the we can say our country or another states right then is incountable means what uh, this land can we cannot divide the land okay land is geographically immobile we cannot transfer the geographically way we cannot transfer the land land is heterogeneous means a uh, land uh, according to the geographical level a uh, different types of land so we can say that um, different type of lands are considering so uh, we can say there are the in nature it's a heterogeneous not homogeneous it's a different then after second factor is the labor what is the meaning of labor and what are the characteristics of it the labor is the human resource like the unskill operator or a talented executive so there are the mainly two types skillful laborers and unskillful laborers so uh, unskilled there are the operator working as a operator and skillful worker are working as a executive of the firm labor means any uh, we can say exertion of the mind or body to undergo the party or wholly to view of the earning of a sum written other than 
the pleasure to derive the directly from the work so they are working as a mentally work or physically work and they have to earn as a wage wages or as a salary what are the characteristics of it labor and laborer are inseparable example laborer has to produce himself or providing the labor service you cannot uh, separate the labor from his services if you have to require the services from the labor then labor and his services or his or her services are not separable then labor is a perishable which cannot be preserved or stored laborers activity is a we can say perishable we cannot store their we can say skills and knowledge right then labor is a uh, living factor of the production that uh, this is we can say uh, they are working as a human so uh, human have a different type of emotions and they have a different type of feelings so at that time they are working as a living factor labor is a mobile factor of the production mobile factor means what uh, you can transfer the labor from one state to another state one country to another country take the example in our gujarat there are the various types of labor they are working uh, from we can say they have transfer from up to gujarat for working some type of we can say that uh, maintenance activities they have to work as a as a mason okay labor is a uh, inevitable for the production and is not fully replaceable okay you cannot fully replace the labor you cannot divide the fully labor labor is a non depreciation input you cannot consider depreciation on the labor labor can not have the fixed capacity of production because the according to the age according to the interest and the we can say there are the emotions and feeling of the labor they have to change their capacity of production so their production cannot fix take the example if uh, any person uh, we can say take the example a person are working as a daily they the person have to work 200 units and uh, if uh, his health cannot we can say not good so uh, they have to produce only 200 to 100 units so capacity is cannot fix then after third factor is the capital what is the meaning of capital and characteristics the term of capital is refers to the stock of assets as the at the particular point of time which is used to generate a streams of income over the life span of the business which means capital means what capital is a one type of stock of assets that overall the life span of business and production process they have to earn like machineries plant so this all things are considered as a capital then the term of capital is represent the total capitalization of business is represented that owners equity fund and outsides debit debt fund so all this consider as capital uh, if any company have a required the higher money so at that time they have to consider the borrowed money means they have to uh, consider the borrowed money debt money from the bank from the institutions is all are consider in the capital then what are the characteristics first one capital is a source of fund and comprising of the owner's prime money and outside the supplementary debt fund second one capital plays the passive role in the business so that is used to buy the fixed asset like the land business, uh, buildings machineries furnitures vehicles and the current assets like the inventories inventory means stock stock of raw material then after debtors debtors means what debtors means a person uh, from who you have to borrow the money then cash and bank balance so you can consider all this uh, factors in the capital capital is highly mobile you can transfer you can uh, invest uh, you can if you have the money you can invest in the different sector you can disinvest the different sector so it's a highly mobile factor capital is a man made factor of the production okay so you can uh, earn the money and you can invest according to your interest then the fourth and the last factor is the entrepreneur there are the meaning and the characteristics of it an entrepreneur is a person who assume like a mobilizing resource for the wealth
so according to jb say that an entrepreneur is a economic is an economic agent who utilizes all the means of production like the land labor and capital what are the characteristics of entrepreneur and there are the various types of entrepreneurs take the example of a reliance founder there are the dhirubhai ambani then second one is the ratanji tata then infosys founder sudha murthy and the uh, narayan murthy so this all are considering as a inf- uh, as a entrepreneur as an entrepreneur first one in any society entrepreneur is a critically and the scarce resources applied for the wealth and generation so they have to working they have to apply this all factor very effectively so they can uh, get the higher profit he is more than the financier manager and technocrat who is assume the risk for the mobilizing the factor of the production and activities them toward the value addition without any uh, assurance toward that he identifies the business opportunity for the various resources for the wealth generation they have to always identify that in which sector i have to uh, take a chance and highly resources and highly generation of the wealth he commit the rewards to the factor cost like the rent to land wages to labor interest to capital they they have to provide the rent on the on the land they have to provide the wages on the lab, for the laborers and they have to uh, given the interest to the capital if they have to borrow from the another sector and assume the risk to uncertain profit rewards so they have to be t- uh, one type of we can say risk taker so they have to re- uh, take the risk and then after they have to get the higher wealth maximization then the entrepreneur is focus on the managerial rather than the operating function so an entrepreneur is plans the activities organize the resources and the direct to the people so it's a one type of we can say operator then after after the production function second uh, we can say topic is that law of variable proportion in the last slides you learned that the factor of production there are the mainly four factor of production what are they yes land labor capital and entrepreneur this four factors are very important regarding your uh, point of view your examination and learn about the next topic law of variable proportion so let's see it so what is the meaning of law of variable proportion law of variable proportion or we can say return to the factor is plays the very important role in the study to the theory of production this law is exhibits to the short run production function in which one factor is varies the other factor are fixed so uh, this law of variable proportion and after this law of variable proportion second law is law of return to scale so you cannot confuse regarding this two uh, two law this law this law of variable proportion is working on the short run period and the law of the return to scale are working on the long run period okay so in the short run period you all factor here you see that what they say that in the short run production one factor is varies and other factor are fixed uh, because in the short run uh, business and we can say any company can not doing the drastic change in their production system okay so only one factor from the four factor only one factor is varies and other factors are fixed okay also when you obtain the extra output and applying an extra unit of input then this output is either equal to or less than the output then you obtain from the previous units so uh, in this production in this law of variable proportion they have only analyzed the short term period law of variable proportion is concerned itself with the way of output change when you increase the number of units of a variable factors variable factors hence it refers the effect of changing the factor ratio on the output uh, in this variable proportion they have to only analyze only identify if there are the minor changes is occur in the vari- uh, variable factor what type of we can say uh, effect is considering on the other factors okay as one input is varies and the other remains constant so the factor ratio of the factor production is varies so let's look one example here is given to you 
let's say that you have a 10 acre of the land and one unit of the labor of production therefore the land labor ratio is what yes 10 10 jam 1 now if you are keep the land constant but the increase in the labor then your land labor ratio is become a 5 5 jam 1 Okay, so here your ratio is converted from 10 gem 1 to 5 gem 1 if you increase the labors and land is same because it cannot be changes in the short time of period. Therefore, as you see that law of analysis effect on the changes of the factor ratio and amount of the on amount of uh, out of the hands is called the law of variable proportion. Here, assumption of law of variable proportion. The law of variable proportion is also called the law of diminishing return hold good under the following assumption. First assumption is a short run. The law of assumption is short run situation. The time is too short for the firm to change the quantity for the fixed factors. So all of the resources apart from this is a one variable are held to unchanged in this quantity and the quality. Second one, constant technology. There are the not changes in the technology. The law assumes that the technology of production is remain unchanged during this production period. Then third one, there are the homogeneous factor. Means each factor of unit is assumed to be a, to be a identical in the amount of uh, amount of quantity. Then after here, there are the diagram and graph regarding this variable proportion law of variable proportion. So here in the table, first of all, you have to look this table. In this table, there you see that land is fixed. Okay, land is only one acre. Then variable factor, they are considered according to unit, variable factors are changes, you see. That let's uh, look about this table that here you see that land are fixed, only one unit or one acre. And variable factor are changes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Then after total physical product means what? Uh, total physical product are considering that the total quantity that produced in the production sector. So what are they? 0, 2, 6, 12, 16, 18, 18, 14 and 8. Then after, there are the marginal uh, physical products means there are the changes in the total products you see here that zero there are the not changes any uh, not there are the not doing any changes in the total production then after two minus zero so first one is a two then after six minus two so second one is a four then 12 minus six so six then after 16 minus 12 four then after 18 minus 16 two then after 18 minus 18 so you can see here that zero then after 18, uh, 14 minus 18. So you see there are the minus 4, right? Then 8 minus 14. So it's a minus 6. I hope you understand it. So there are the stage 1. And then after stage 2 and stage 3. Here you see that in the stage 1, there are the slightly increasing from 2, 4, 6, right? And in stage 2, there are the decreasing from 4, 2 and 0. And stage 3, there are its value are considering from the minus figure okay so there there are the diagram uh, in the diagram there are the mainly two axes are considering x axis and y axis x axis is stand for the unit of the labor and y axis is stand for the total pro physical product and the marginal physical product so here there are the mainly two curves you see in the diagram first one there are the total production curve and marginal production curve so in the first stage, you see that both curves are increasing, okay. You see in the stage one, total production are also increasing and marginal product are also increasing. In the second stage, total production is increasing, but marginal production is decreasing. Then in the third stage, total production is decreasing, but uh, through the total production, we can say compared to the total production, Marginal production is a highly, we can say, decreasing and it's converted to the minus value, okay. So, it's called the variable proportion. 
So here there are the graph of variable proportion and the table of or we can say schedule of this production factor. Then after what are the importance of this law of uh, law of variable proportion? The law of variable proportion has a vast and the general application is briefly is considered as it's helpful in the understanding the clearly the process of production. So it's explain the input output relation. So uh, entrepreneur can easily understand that their production factor are, are considering in the uh, diminishing value or the minus value. We can find out by how much total production will be increased as a result of increase in the input. Then after the load tells us the tendency of diminishing return and is found in the all sectors of the economy which may be agriculture or industry. The law tells us that any increase in the unit of the variable factor will lead to be increase in the total production at the diminishing rate. The elasticity of submission, substitution of the variable factor for the fixed factor is not infinite. Then after the last law, law of return to scale. What is the meaning of that? Uh, firstly, you have to clear about that, that law of return to scale is working on the long run and law of variable proportion is working on the short run. So you cannot confuse in the examination, right? So here, no fixed factor of the production because it's working on the long run. In the long run, all all fixed factor are also considered in the variable factor because uh, production is increasing then companies uh, have to get the gain the higher profit so they can change their uh, we can say land machinery all of the factors are the variable factor not any consider any fixed factor okay so here is a no fixed factor of the production in the long run so the law of return to scale is describe the relationship between the variable input and output when the all inputs or the factor are increased in the same proportion the law of return to scale is analyzing analyzes the effect on the scale on the level of production so here we find out in in what proportion that output change when there was a proportionate change in the quantity of all inputs. So, so the answer is to this question help to be from the determine the scale of the size in the long run. So here there are the graph and diagram regarding this uh, return to scale low. Here uh, in the diagram you can see that there are the st three stages are also considering in this law of return to scale. Uh, in the x-axis is 10 for the uh, input and y-axis is 10 for the marginal product. Here you see that first one, there are the increase in the return. So what are the increase in the return to scale? If a output of the firm is increasing more than the proportion to the equal to the proportion increase in the all input, the production is said to be existing increase in the return to scale. For example, if the amount of inputs are double and the output is increased by more than the double, so it's called be the increase uh, is the return to scale. So whenever there are the increase into scale of the production is lead to be a lower average cost per unit because it produces as the firm is enjoy the economic of the scale. Simply in this economic return to scale in this uh, we can say uh, field or in this stage first stage a uh, company get the higher profit if they have to assume that uh, we have to gain only 1 lakh rupees they have to uh, get the higher profit and they have to be produce the higher input or we can say output right uh, if they have to doing the input only 100 units take the example in the first stage if they have to uh, we can say that they have to be in uh, consider the input 100 uh, units of raw material and they can assume that we have to only consider the 1000 production from this input but they have to be find out the 2000 units from this 100 input so they have to be enjoy we can say that they have to be enjoy the higher profit in this uh, we can say increasing return to scale okay i hope you understand it then the second stage is constant return to scale. Means what? 
when all the inputs are increased by the certain percentage and the output is to be increased by the same percentage so the production function is said to be exist in the constant return to scale for example if a firm is double the input and if the double output so in case there have to be a triple output so there is a constant return to scale and the production has no effect on the average production of the unit so here you take the example if they have to double their input means 100 to 200 and they have also uh, get the higher we can say production from double to triple means from uh, in the first stage they have to be considered the 1000 okay we can say the 2000 okay 2000 output unit but in the constant return to scale they have to be get the 4000 unit so it's a constant return to scale uh, how much we can say take the example that 200 units they have to be put in the pro, uh, in the uh, processing pr production process and they have to be get the same thing uh, from the production process so it's a constant return to scale then after diminishing return to scale means what the term of diminishing return to uh, scale is referred to the scale where the output is increased in the smaller proportion than the input means take the example uh, if they have to be uh, doing the output uh, we can say sorry input is a hundred units in the production process and they have only get the 900 units okay so this is called the diminishing return to scale for example here one example is given to you if a firm is increasing the input by the 100% but the output is decreased by the less than 100% so the firm is said to be exhibit the in, uh, decreasing return to scale. In case of a decreasing return to scale the firm is faces the diseconomy of scale means firm have to face the loss because uh, we can say they have to be uh, use the higher input and they cannot get the proper output so they have to be face the loss. The firm is a return to scale is lead to be a higher average cost per unit and it's considered the loss for the firm. Okay, I hope you understand this both law, law of variable proportion and law of return to scale. Okay. Thank you so much. If you have any query regarding these topics, regarding these five topics, you can ask me anytime. You can call me, you can WhatsApp me. Thank you so much.